it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. <laughs> move on, move on. Like we a host of blinkers. Honestly, on. say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> Hello, my name is Henry Slear. I'm Glenda Swart. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Emanuel. Vanny <laughs> Zengo. Uh, okay, so this is very interesting. So, 11 years, so nine years, he survived in a monogamous relationship, successful yeah. monogamous relationship. Yes. And then you got married, and then you decided you were emotionally secure enough to have an open relationship. Mm. And it works. Yeah. That, that is it. Uh, well, let's, we'll hear from you now, but. Sure. Okay, well, so, okay. sure. being, being married allowed us, I think, the security and safety to explore opening our relationship and it wasn't something new to me i mean i've, I've done counseling with Not countless anymore. couples in open and closed relationships because you talk about emotional monogamy versus sexual monogamy and being married allowed us the safety and security to explore the feeling of sexual monogamy. monogamy were you were you particularly sexual when you were younger Absolutely. So you, you had a lot of fun before you met your husband? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We both did. He mentions me. I'm very interested in this to Al. But it's not a Yeah, it's the reverse of what, of what but, actually sorry, really I want to come back to that. But uh, not so much playing the field. I've had long-term relationships. 14 years. Okay, no, but I'm talking about playing the field. I'm talking about uh, scoring random yeah, people. Yeah, I've gone through that. We've, we've both gone through that. And what do you get out of being with someone else? Comfort, security. No, no. Get out of allowing someone else to come into that relationship. Oh. Is it together? Do you do it together or oh, yeah. independently? Only, only together. Okay. You know, when you talk about open and closed relationships, it's not one extreme or the other. They're great, right? So yeah, sometimes so you two will only bring someone in together. <laughs> yeah. Or like some couples, the only we go to a venue together. Like the other and We leave mode. together. Okay. But what happens there? It, it, it's it's a, there's a grey scale, and so ours is bring someone into our space together. And you repeat? Do you repeat it all? Or is it just a one time? Are they, what are the rules? Huh. The rules? Can you verbalize the rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what are they? Uh, okay, That's obviously weird. for me, safe sex. I'm a yeah. safer sex awesome. advocate, okay. Um, um, and that we do not play or meet with or date anybody individually. Okay. But we can repeat the same person. Well, so, 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 yeah, so would you date a third thing. person? No. Actually, no. Well, what do you mean by date? As a couple? As a couple? Yeah, date? As a couple a what's a date? Have dinner with somebody? Yes, obviously. Like no. they're going to a three way relationship. Yeah. yeah. No. That's For me, I, I can't see them. But I no, don't think we need it. Uh, is it because you're. Okay, now you said it's because you feel safe enough now in your marriage to go and explore the sexual side of it. Mm. But now I want to know it's like, you know, if you're going to if you're thinking, if you're looking at something else, it means that in your relationship, there's something that's not providing you for you. Because this is something you want, and it's something you're going after with your partner. Or what is your relationship not giving you? you know, I, I, I don't think that's the right question. I, and so, yeah, no, no, seriously. But there, there's something there, but I don't think it's the right question. Because I, I think the answer is that we're both men. In a male, female, heterosexual relationship, a lot of men fuck around and it's quite clandestine secret because women are socialized to to control and mediate male sexuality. Yes? Us boys are socialized to get if we were straight to get mm. the girls' panties as soon as possible. I don't agree. Okay? Girls let me come finish. Girls are socialized to even though they want the boys in their panties to get them out as long as possible. So you take the girl out of the equation, you've got two boys. It's, there's a more impulsive animal sexual energy. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So in a male-to-male -male relationship where you're both emotionally secure enough uh, to allow an open relationship, we're not advocating for open relationships for everyone, and where you're quite sure of emotional fidelity as opposed to sexual fidelity, it allows you the space to explore options. And rather than have clandestine sex elsewhere, especially in an era of AIDS and STIs and whatever, let's be open about it and celebrate this and share it 
within our relationship. But what, seriously, what happens if the person you meet, you fall in love with? I mean, that's a very dangerous game. They can't fall in love with you, they could fall in lust with you. It's, it's too soon. It's, you know, la- People do fall in love at first sight. Yeah, but well, that's, that's, that's generally... Yeah, 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 well, that's but, so but it does yeah. happen. It does happen. And this whole concept is nice to me. Because yeah. I'm a monogamous minded person. Okay. But it's different strokes for different... And there are people, I mean, I have a friend, my best friend, Devette, who met a girl. Uh, she came into the place, he saw her, he went and broke up with his fiance because he knew he was going to be with her. Okay. This happens. I'm not a... I've pr- done I'm, that myself. I've done the exact same thing myself. You know, people fall in love. It's weird, but it's true. It definitely happens. If you happens. were in a relationship, ten, let's say 10, 20 years, yeah. and... You've done whatever you could do sexually and you've explored and blah 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 and you are really sure of the space emotionally would you still stay close to the option of opening it up to someone else coming into that space on a physical level could you consider the, the uh, right possibility. now, no. I've not well, been in a 10 year, 12 year relationship okay, to make a comment okay. to say, yeah, okay, it's never gonna happen. Right. So I'm not being, I haven't been in your shoes, okay. and I haven't been in that long of a yeah. relationship. Yeah. But for the moment, I so definitely say awesome. no. Especially like young couples that are, you know, I've, I'm from uh, parents that have been together 35 years, grandparents, both of both sets, 55 years. I'm right. convinced that they weren't all monogamous, but it was clandestine, as you said. But it wasn't an ongoing affair where there were lots of people that came in. Maybe there was a mistake here and there. Occasion. Everyone makes mistakes. Right. Mistake, okay? Yeah. okay? But like, there's young, specifically young gay couples are challenged with the idea of putting, to, putting together a more um, solid and real relationship, which yeah. is only really possible, I think, in the traditional sense of a relationship. I think then if we want to change it all up and go, okay, fine, relationships can be emotional, and not monogamous, that is a whole nother conversation. Can you be emotionally monogamous and then be sexually active with other people? I, I'm not sure. These, these are questions that you can only answer in your own personal space. Like when it happens to you, maybe it's going to happen by mistake initially, or maybe it's going to happen by a conversation where you make How rules. How many guys aren't cheating on their wives right now? I think there are some, I think there are some that aren't. Okay, so not many. No, of course there are. Yeah. Of course there are. Let's say all men. Yeah, okay. Well, and they're cheating with men. <laughs> so that's the sad part. Success is what you, you sacrifice. There is the urge. It comes with self-discipline. I mean, if you look at the teachings of Buddhism and you bring all this now into it, thank you. Um, it also it's self-discipline. I mean, you want to obviously you see a hot guy, and uh, you have been sleeping with your partner, as you say, for ten years, and the difference comes into finding a way to maybe say no. I mean, I mentally see guys, obviously, and. That is not my husband, and I want not my husband, my fiance, mm-hmm. that I want to be with, but I never act on it. So, you know. And he's probably thinking the same thing. Probably more that, than that. More and that's, that's fine, and that's thing, normal, yeah. that's okay. But the difference but is. But darling, someone's going to suck your <laughs> microphone soon. You <laughs> keep thrusting it like that. Okay. Do you know that? I don't think it's going to be him. But absolutely not, I'm being monogamous. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're advocating the different scenario. Um, yeah, I just don't don't judge it for you in that situation. But I that's think that's thing. the first thing. It's not and the main thing is to be open and honest. Don't cheat. Be open and honest. Negotiate it we so that so that you can protect each other and the relationship. I and think the space. security is the most important thing. Personal security. Do you feel secure as a person, mm-hmm. and you don't feel like you're going to be felt violated by that? Yeah. Is the cornerstone of a successful if there is such a thing as a successful open relationship both people have to be very comfortable with themselves like overwhelming like we are like the other night is a point to note i mean my boyfriend got crashed out of his brackets out of his bracket at my own shop the other night and like started like in his drunken way coming on someone else and i didn't for one second go like i'm going to worry about this because first he was a straight person and he was going to get bad but secondly at the end of the day i was going you know like we know each other very well. Like we know each other to the point where I, like I trust him with everything. And it's not really, the, the issue isn't that, fine, if he got really drunk and he stuck his tongue in someone else, it really wouldn't be a huge issue for me because I'm not so worried about myself. Like I'm not, I know that I can survive it. It's not like a huge thing, but I think the best, the funniest part for me is that it would be a huge issue for him when he woke up in the morning. Do you understand? Like, so 
but that tells something about him more than tells me about me. But surely it would have but troubled you. Come on. If you and if you hadn't have been there, it would have troubled me on a level that is. Must be there. It would trouble me in the sense that I'd go. I've got to worry about what's going to happen when he's very drunk and not doing what he knows what he's doing. But it wouldn't worry me on an emotional level at all because I know that he wouldn't be doing it for emotional reasons. Well, that's my issue. See, I think it's, maybe it's the Virgo thing. I'm a closet whore. When I'm sober, I'm very, very controlled. When I drink, and like, now Alan and I, we've made a deal. No, me too, but I'm not too. I drink, and then I want to kiss up. everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a woman, a man, a dog. <laughs> okay, leave the I, dogs. Well, yeah, it would. If it was there, I'd kiss it. So that's my, and Alan and I now have a deal, whereas I don't, okay, because he's very nervous and it makes him, he's not very secure regarding, we've discussed being in an open... How long have you guys been together? Very, it's very young still, it's only a year. Okay. Well. So, but we very, I mean, we knew the first two weeks, I told my mother, listen, we're getting married, and my mother's like, oh Jesus, calm down, <laughs> you know, you just met this guy, and da, da, da. and I've said this story, I've sung this tune, my own mother was married six times, so... She knows that, you know, it doesn't always work out the way you have it in your head. So we have discussed it. We almost came close to might of doing something, but yeah, we did both decided that it's... Yeah. Have, what, have, what, have you been in open relationships before? Never. And I don't think I would want to. Have you been in a relationship? So you sort of do That's know why what's I also right think and what's wrong then when it comes to dating is it and morals. It's just like personal. I'm just a little too jaded for my last relationship to ever really okay, think so that a fairy tale ending like 50 but years our, our monogamy love can last. The same thing. Our sex and love the same thing. Why are we confusing those issues? Yeah, but maybe random shagging is reserved. They're for not the single. Same, but you can't intertwine any of them. They're they're but connected. I see them as different. I you know I tell you one thing. They are different. I actually they're have a no yeah, for you guys, no, no, especially you. Difference. That's like a man who. There's a big difference between fucking and making love. Hold on. I love making love. Let me tell you why I say this. It's because no, I no, have I a physical so. problem. I cannot be with no, somebody no, sexually no, until me. I've known them emotionally. <laughs> I have a physical <laughs> I mean, I disability. <laughs> no, but you, I'm saying, of course, that's, there's, a difference. there's a difference. I'm saying, if you go out and get drunk yeah. and shag somebody, yeah. it's very different to yeah, making love to somebody. But if you're in love with someone, you can still... No, no, but that, of course, those two things can come together, but there's a very big difference between fucking and Why love. Why does lust not for me. threaten oh. love? Not Maybe for some if you other. love your partner, why is lust such an ominous, dark, threatening force? That lust is the it's physical part the of a relationship. Lust is 50% of the relationship. The other 50% is emotional. For me, you have to be lustful for your partner in order to want to stay with them and to want to be monogamous. And after 20 years, you're going to lust after your Absolutely. partner? Absolutely. If you, I, I mean, I know a lot of old, old cock, people who still have sex. Same so. old cock. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying oh, at least you <laughs> to <laughs> I think that you can develop to, develop a relationship to the point where the attraction is and physical attraction is based so much on emotion that they yeah. can go together. Yeah. I mean my parents are in exact I'd, I'd, I'd be sickened to know how many times they have sex. I don't want to know. I think I think that the thing that drives most gay people to come out is love. And when you fall mad enough with the first guy, that was my experience, then you feel like you want to tell everybody and you don't want to hide it anymore. And your parents, if you're close to your parents, are the only people that you really feel like you need to tell. I mean, that was my... That's a strong, strong point of view in, in terms of coming out. The other half I was are, straight are scared. For 29 years. Yeah, but the other half are scared to come out regardless of whether or not you're in love with someone. It's not... I, I don't think it's... I was petrified. It's, it's not about that. I was petrified. Yeah, but you're strong. It's not like... Not many people are, are like that. Coming out for me isn't about telling your parents or your sister or your cousin. That's like the tip of the iceberg. The, the process, that's disclosing. Coming out is about the 10 years that preceded uh, that, where and, you and learned at often. school, where you knew you were different. You were odd, you were queer, you were bullied. Have you read the Velvet Rage? Yeah, it's exactly about and I've written rage. articles about this. Coming, telling, disclosure and coming out are not the same thing. It's the story of the ugly duckling. Uh, we've all that story. We have the duck in the, the swan in Duckland. That's the story of coming out. Where integrity. where you? Uh, well, no. Which is the, no. You know what the word integrity means? Yeah. Do you know what it means? I do actually. Okay, what does it mean? <laughs> no. Because I ask people this all the time. It's, it's about if you're a swan, no. then you claim to no. be a swan. But if you Oxford don't know that there's such a thing as a swan, you pretend to be a duck. That's what. That's what the word. But is guys who are 14, 16 but, can't yeah, saying, claim to be something they don't know that they are. No. That's that takes the a lot tragedy. Of you're it happens at a stage when we are vulnerable. 
Brack is not about your money. Out. It's not about telling it's sort mommy. Of just Assumption. Now, Barak comes from. A, let me just tell you, Orthodox Jewish. The rabbi is there for Shabbos dinner. Jewish. You don't understand. His mother can barely speak English. So I don't think. <laughs> no, for the longest time, Barak is. I've known you for how long? I've known you for what nine years almost. And everyone knew you were gay, but you could never ever say it. You could never ever. And it's and it's tricky because you know you don't want to hurt the people. You don't want to be rejected by the people who love you. Well, obviously. Yeah, but the discussion as in like. I am gay. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's that's, that's yeah, pretty much telling them. Your father is this Jew? Yeah, but no. you know, like she knew sort of yeah. thing. She was brought up with my favorite. <laughs> Do you think that being gay makes getting older more of a crisis? Yeah, because you can't be on gay after over thirty. No, no one will talk to you. I don't think like in those terms. He doesn't think in gay. But do you think in those terms? Yes, I do. Really? Because we are yeah, living you know in a world, in an aesthetic world. Even the nicest Christian, nicest Buddhist, nicest whatever, they believe in beautiful sunrises and baby smiles. They believe in aesthetics. And this world, I have made my so my money, I've made my career on looks. Okay. Bodyliness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's shocking to admit, but it, it's a fact of life. Everyone, even the nicest people, they, they, they would say, oh, it's vain, it's this, but they all. We are, we are living in an aesthetic world, and it, and it scares you me know, a bit. You know, I, I think, I I think, think I'm dead like to you. Sorry. I'm 50. No, 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 sorry. I'm 50. He laughs. Yeah. Well, God bless you. I'm 50. God bless me. I'm like one of the no, same. God bless you. I'm not even aware. I got a cigarette. But years ago... I'm sorry, I've been 50. No. Years ago, I wrote an article about the, the queer stock exchange, how we trade shares, right? Oh, and they are shares. The, the first gay share gay is gay youth. Gay gay youth. No, big time. Queer. Men, you, straight woman. No. Youth. Straight nah, woman. Focus, baby. Youth. Oh. The baby. second <laughs> question, the second <laughs> question, <laughs> bodiliness, your industry, <clears throat> models. The third industry, materialism. Then there's another share which is hanging <clears throat> literally suspended between bodiliness and materialism is the size of your cock. Oh, shame. But Those that's are the shares that we trade <laughs> on the stock exchange. Brooke really? is actually the most innocent here. There's I wish I could say it, but I won't do it to you. You're talking about an Adonis tonight. complex. What's it? An Adonis complex. Adonis, yeah. I'm thinking about being thinny. Jim, Jim Rats. I'm thinking about what comes at age. The idea that you have to say that. Well, that comes from the AIDS and HIV epidemic. That doesn't come from the AIDS 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 epidemic. That doesn't come from
gay people have been oppressed and the shame that they carried which was imposed by people telling us that it was wrong to be homosexual they have established places like dark rooms those places are shameful yeah. places right, right, right. where people think they go and hide you want to tell me that every, every cock you've citizen. sucked you've known the guy's name and right. his star sign right. and his parents <laughs> and what school he went to bullshit yeah. exactly anonymous <laughs> sex <laughs> is a reality <laughs> And places like Hot House fulfill a vital role in many guys' lives. They really do. Are we smoking here? Are we allowed to smoke yeah, here? Until, until they tell us to smoke. It oh. fills a vital role, but it fills a role what, that I think is making it too guys, easy. I care about this fucking camera. Be honest. honest. Be honest. It's too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. There we go. <laughs> so, sorry, have you been fucked? No. <laughs> I want to say that, but I won't. I won't you do it to you, Barakas. just him and silenced him. I'm going to tell you something about Barakas. What are you going to tell about me? No, Barakas has never... Has never... Has never been... He's never been with a guy. Ever. Really? I told him if he doesn't fuck this year, I will fucking get a whore to fuck him. A butch whore. What's that? How old are you, my love? How old are you? He's been in love. 25. been in love and and you gay? Hang on, are you gay? (laughs) Are you gay? (laughs) Yes. Are you gay? Yeah. (laughs) Then there's a sexual dysfunction and we must find out. (laughs) Let me tell you something. I know what you know what no, you know what his sexual dysfunction is. Family! No, exactly. Come on! Yes, Every time that. you get Come intimate, on. you must be thinking, Jesus, what am I family gonna think? Or oh, you don't think Jesus, because he didn't. No! Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think that. you gay. Cigarette smoke. Oh, you oh, bloody smokers, man. You didn't even ask us. You asked yeah. the restaurant, you don't ask us. Oh, God, yeah. this one is the worst cigarette. It's a top thing. You bottoms, guys. Bottoms, don't, guys. Don't. Fuck, I mean, he doesn't even know if he's a top or a bottom. Fuck, guys. What side are you on? Like no, no, he doesn't no, even know. know he's a top or a he doesn't know him. Oh, uh, yeah. Why does the sexual dysfunction? I want to go more into this. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Sex is fucking fun. Normal. And fun. It's a good thing. But we don't, it's don't, get, human and we don't get taught that you saying that I'm now flippantly. Yeah, we but don't. We no. don't get raised. Who's we? Gay guys. No. Anyone. Jewish cultures, Christian cultures, I Catholic, Catholic cultures. I don't know about Jewish Catholic. culture. Catholic Catholics, Catholic Christian. Christian. You get raised that it's wrong. That it's something you that is dirty. So how do you feel about your cock? How do you feel about your ass? How do you feel about your ass? Is it a good thing or bad thing? Tell me. I think mine's awesome. <laughs> That's one thing I never talk about. How do you feel about your asshole? Is it a bad thing? Do you feel ashamed? I think the sun shines out of mine. Yeah, no, be, be honest. honest. <laughs> no, be honest. We can share it. I'm just pretty thought about it. Well, I think about know. it. I'm inviting you to think okay. about it. I've seen a Have Dr. Ruth program from 15 years oh, ago God. where she um, told women to go and look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Because you know how many women will never Have even look. Have you seen your own arsehole, Chris? Of course I've seen it. I've seen it every different angle. I've got to wax something. Yes. Go there, look. Oh, Lord, no. I'm more fascinated with my penis than my asshole. I must no. be honest. I could never. I, really I would like to bleach my ass. I must be honest. Oh, you can. No, you I know, but I could never lay bleach. with my ass, especially my. I have personal it's relationships weird. with all my beauty therapists, yeah. so I can That's never funny. lay with my asshole in their face and have them bleach no, it or no, wax don't it. Go to a doctor. Don't go to an amateur. Go to a doctor. There is a doctor in Cape Town specializing in anal bleaching. Do you prefer your know. men cut or uncut? Let's go there. Well, it probably depends on what you are. <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Uncut. Uncut. Mm. So you value the foreskin? Mm. Okay. And um, this has got. I love this terminology. You value the foreskin. No, no, I'm seriously. <laughs> uh, serious. Uh, there's a whole drive internationally about <laughs> circumcision <laughs> in, I got in terms of HIV. Age. Huh? I got caught at a very late age, so I'm I'm definitely into What's this topic. Was that so? 18, yeah. Why oh, did that yeah, happen at 18? 18? I was dating an Israeli, and I felt very weird having an uncut, have being uncut. Mm-hmm. So I cut myself. What is it? No, I have not cut myself. I cut myself. That was my decision. Yeah, it was my decision. That was a mistake. It was my decision. Your parents have you cut if any of you are cut. It's not your own decision. So I had myself, yes, cut. I went to the doctor and said I want to be cut. I want to circumcise. So, but I prefer uncircumcised. Now. You miss your. Is that is that the same emotional thing that happened? Is that the same guy? No. Okay. And you. 
He's Jewish. Of course, Steve Austin's yeah. hideous. Really? Yeah. Why? Wow. Yeah. It's dirty, it's ugly. It just looks ugly. Ugly. Circumcision plays a part in HIV prevention. But with gay men, there's a fashion thing about this. There's What's another fashion song. What's fashionable now? Uncut. In, in, in the Northern Hemisphere in America, they went for cut years ago. And yeah. those guys are cut. I and now you get foreskin you get foreskin reconstruction. Yeah. But when you're not cut, it's like dry. Yeah. And you need what? lube. When you when you when you cut, you need lube. When you jerk off as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well, so. Where did you hear that uh, with the HIV thing? It means that That's there's no, prevention. No, it doesn't change. Changes it's the infection rate. Yeah. Yes, it does. My so mind. you're much less risk if you, if you cut. Common knowledge. You wake up, get on the program, mm. but not for <laughs> anal fucking. It protects uh, men when they're fucking a woman who is HIV positive. Yeah, because there is no scientific uh, anything about uh, anal sex. The average person in Cape Town, gay man, doesn't know his HIV status. He may have that. tested yeah. five years ago, ten years ago, three months ago, but since then he's taken risks. So we are all collectively worried on some level, consciously or unconsciously, about our HIV status. So there's an element of denial about that. We, there's a tension. Let's say I meet you, in a, in a, we're going to have an anonymous sex, we're going to fuck now in the hothouse. I don't raise your HIV status because I'm scared of my HIV status, it threatens me. So I don't challenge you, you don't challenge me, and we have unsafe sex. Bullshit. I think, no, I disagree. I don't know, I know, I think I know the key, key unsafe in fact, sex this conversation is a goes straight to your conversation, I won't mention names, but something happened with people at this table exactly. where I made a phone exactly. call and said, I know that that person is positive. No, I made and, a phone call. And I, I made the I first phone call, my friend. Person. I made the first phone call, I that, that you made the second person. phone call. But and how did a, you know? Because of rumor. Okay, well, forget about rumor. Well, that's what I heard. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. This, okay, so this, is after, this is after the fact. I phoned him at and said, the time, if you're at the sick, time of you better the fact, tell me right now because my was friend a, could you die and that's guys murder. colluded to have unsafe sex. I don't agree with it. It wasn't with me. I'm well, saying. whoever. But it's not a personal thing. But you formed an alliance with someone because you wouldn't challenge his HIV status because it would challenge your own anxiety. No, let's put it this way, you're missing the point. I'm I'm missing I'm, the I know, point. I know somebody who is um, 64 years old, grew up in the San Francisco era, where um. he was going to the, the, what their bathhouses were and all that. He was here two years ago, he was, we were sitting at dinner, he's been through it, eh, from the okay, And he happened? said to me that, he has never in his life, in his life of being sec uh, sexual and homosexual, seen what goes down in Cape Town. But why? He said it is because over it's because I'm protecting. No, denial. let me finish denial. this. He said he has never seen reckless behaviour yes. like he's seen in Cape Town, but specifically Cape Town. We okay, that's where now I'm going to take the conversation to the next level. We have people that come to the city from out of town and expect the same circumstances because we seem very Western that they might get in their own hometown or countries. It's not the same here. You've got to be a lot more careful. Personal dreams. Oh, I want to raise children in this world. Shut up, Barack. This is my goddamn dream. I want to raise children in this world <laughs> with somebody I care about and hopefully a mutual monogamous relationship where we both feel happy with one another. I want to contribute. I want to. I want to give more than I've taken in this world, and I take a hell of a lot. I'd like to make the world a better place. I really would, and I try quite hard in my little way to make the world a better place. My dream is very simple. I think that you've got to achieve. <clears throat> an understanding of love and that whatever that takes um, is what I, my dream is like whether that means sacrificing things or giving things or taking things that's my dream the thing the first thing that comes to my mind is to own like a, a beach house you're so Jewish <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to sit on the beach and enjoy the sun that's me mine's very very similar to Henry's I just want kids little white picket fence American dream <laughs> a golden retriever, something and a stable. 
a big hairy top. My dream is to fly. I don't know what my dream is. My dream is blonde and blue eyes. No.